back to a brand new episode of Mushroom Programming. In today's episode, we have this application here that I'm creating for a customer that allows them to create an account using this forum that you can see and also allows them to sign in obviously after they create an account. Now, this, this project is connected to a Firebase project already. And if you want to know how you can connect your project to a Firebase project, then watch my previous video. I'm going to show it somewhere here now. But for now, I'm just going to show you how you can create the functions to sign up and sign in into the Firebase database or to create an account, basically. So what we're going to do, obviously, as you can see, the UI is already created here. And I have these two files over here, the sign up and the sign in page. So let's go ahead to the sign up. Obviously, as you can see here, we have the text fields and we also have our button, the sign up button, this one. And what we want to do by the end of this video is so that when someone clicks on sign up, we're going to check that all the fields are completed. And then what we're going to do is we're going to call that function that allows us to sign up into our Firebase project, basically. So without further ado, let's go ahead and do that. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to import Firebase just like that. After that, I'm going to go all the way to the bottom and we're going to be creating two functions. One that will create the user and the other one is going to create some information to that user and link it up to. So we're going to call the first one func create user just like this, open and close the bracket. And after that, we're going to first check that all the text fields are not empty. So we want to make sure that every text field has been, has some value basically. So we're going to go over here and we're going to say if, and inside of here, we are going to say, now over here, I have shop, e shop name, user email, first password, second password, these basically. So I'm going to check that all four of these options are actually filled up. So I'm going to say if shop name is not equal to nothing. And if um, we can say user email, is not equal to nothing and uh, first password so remember we have first password and also we have second password so and I'll explain what each one does now and second password is not equal to nothing so the reason we have first and second is because we want to make sure that the user enters the correct password or the password that they think they know so we're going to say enter your password and then we're going to re-enter and we're going to compare that they're the same so after we make sure that everything has been completed, now we're going to check that the first password is actually the same as the second password that they enter. So I'm going to say if, and then inside of here, we're going to say if first password is equal to second password, then what you wanna do is you actually wanna start this authentication stage. So you wanna start creating an account. And to do this, what we're going to be doing is we're going to say auth dot auth just like this and then we are going to be saying dot create user now i'm going to select with email now for the email we're obviously going to be passing that user email so i'm going to say user email for password you might have guessed it i'm going to be saying first password why not the second it actually doesn't matter you can use the first second since by the stage we already checked that they are the same and what we want to do after this is we actually want to remove everything and we're going to comp we're basically want to check if there's any errors that occurred from this. So to do this, I'm going to open and close a bracket. Inside of here, I'm going to open and close a normal bracket and I'll say res and then ERR -E for error in. And now we're going to check if ERR is not equal to nil. So in that scenario, if we do actually have an error, if the error is present, if the error is not equal to nil, what we want to do, just in this scenario, we just want to print the error. So I'm going to say print ERR. And I think it might cause some problems because it doesn't know if it will exist or not. So let's just do this. There we go. And obviously you want to handle the error, like you want to display the error to the user or something. But for now, we're just going to print it. After that, we're going to click on return. Now, what if uh, there was no errors? Well, what we want to do, so we're going to say else, create user info and this is a function that we're about to create so by the stage at this stage when this function is executed what's going to happen is that we're going to create a user in our database now we actually want to fill that user or link some information to the user so we're going to create this function let's just see where this one ends over here so i'm going to say func and we're going to say create user info 
So in the scenario that everything is correct and we do create a user, what we want to do now is we want to link or add some information to that. So now we actually want to play with the database and add some things to the database. So I'm going to click let or I'm going to type let db is equal to Firestore dot Firestore let email or maybe you can do this let email equal to auth dot auth and then we're going to say dot current oops, sorry dot current user dot email so now we're actually requesting to get the email of the current log logged in or signed up user because remember we created him before we actually started following this function we're then going to say let user id so we want to collect the id of the user as well we're going to say auth dot auth for authentication dot current user dot uid and we are also going to be collecting or now we're actually going to start pushing this information to the database so we're going to say db that we created at the top and we're going to say collection and inside of here we are going to say users and then we're going to say document sorry document and what basically what we want to do is we want to have the document with the name with the id of the user so the document name is going to have the id of the user and i'm going to explain this it's going to be very clear so we're going to open and close a bracket inside of here we're going to be passing user id just like this and after that we're going to say dot set data just like that we're going to open and close a square root bracket Oops. and inside of here we're going to start filling up our data so our first thing is going to be user email we obviously want to include the user email in the database for the user we're then going to have shop name with capital S we are then going to be, oops, sorry, shop name. Yep. And then we're going to pass in the shop name that we created at the top when we're creating the UI. After that, we're going to be putting the password. Yes, I know. We are going to be saving the password in the database. And again, you can use second or first, but I'm just going to go ahead and use first because it's the first thing that came to my mind. And after that, the last thing we can do is the user ID. So let's obviously, as a good of habit, I always just put the user ID. So user ID. And we're going to say it's equal to. This should have been the opposite. So just like this. And I'm going to say that it is, in fact, equal to user ID. And we can force unwrap that because we know it will exist. So let's just give it a second and check what the problems are. So it's asking us, are you sure that there will be some values here? Yes, we are. If we reach the stage, we've already checked that everything exists. So we can easily force unwrap everything here. And maybe for these two as well, actually. Because remember, we already checked that these are not empty. So now at this stage, uh, this should not ask for anything. OK, for this one, we can. And there we go. We no longer have those yellow issues. We can probably also remove for that one. There we go. Finally, this works. So now if I actually run this and I will, you'll be able to see that it does create a user for us. So let's just go to the database real quickly. As you can see, I already have two users. And if I go to real time database or five store database, sorry, you'll be able to see that I already have all of this created. So I have the user. And I have two users over here. And basically that's what we did. We're pushing all this information up. But now what we want to do is we want to see if it will create a new user and also a new authentication user over here. To get this working, you need to create a Firebase project. You need to go to authentication and you need to A, enable authentication using email and also create a database. Again, I have a video that shows you how to do that and I'll link it now. So now what we want to do to the app because it should be running right now. And what we can do is we can now click on this. Oh, but I just realized what we did wrong is although everything is connected correctly, we didn't actually call the function when someone clicks on the button. So let's go back to our code. And when someone clicks on sign up, if he, the action should be to call this function. So let's go ahead and copy it, paste it over here. I'm going to rerun this. And this time it should actually create a user for us. So I'm going to go back. And what I'm going to do is I'll click on this button 
and let's enter some shop names so for shop name i'm just going to say something random like ikea uh for email i will say ikea at hotmail.com for password let's just go ahead and put something like one two three four five six same thing here one two three four five six and i'm going to click on sign up so at this stage this should have been called up and what we can do is we can now go back over here we can refresh this and we will see right now if we did actually succeed to create an account there you go we can see that we did create an account successfully with the email that we wanted provider email created when and my user id and if i go to the firestore database we should be able to also users see a third one created here and let's find it there you go we have that user that we just created with a user id email shop name and password that we just created so that's that's done that's perfect now what i'm going to show to you is the sign in option so let's go back to sign in and signing in is actually much easier than signing up we're going to go over here and we're also again we're going to import uh, firebase and this time yeah let's go back and we're going to click do you have an account this time what we want to do is we want to sign in and once we sign in i've already created this once a successful sign in happens we're going to be moving to another page and i'm going to show you how we're going to do that basically with the email and the password we want to be able to sign in once someone clicks on sign in which is this button we're going to call one function this time that's going to handle everything so let's go ahead and do that i'm going to go over here and i'm going to say funk and i'm going to say call it sign in and we are going to open and close the bracket for the sign in i'm going to put parameters i'm going to put email which is going to be of type string and then i'm going to be putting a password which as well will be of type string now after that what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to call auth dot auth and i'm going to say dot sign in just like this uh with email so let's just go ahead and move this we're going to say with email there we go and i'm going to pass in that parameter and then i'm going to also be putting password and i'm going to be passing password that, like this one um so after that what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be doing this open and close the bracket inside of here i'm going to be saying oh yes and he error and then i'm going to say in and now again we're going to check if any errors happen while we are signing in so i'll say if err is not equal to nil so if the error actually does exist what we want to do is we want to print and then we want to say err dot localized description so we actually want to print the error again it's not the best way to handle it but just for this tutorial and then we're going to say else so if there is no errors what we want to do is this is the trick uh, so to move to another page basically i created this function in another file that will be triggered well, actually, we can just say something like print user is signed in. So if we do manage to sign in, it's going to say user signed in. And it's up to you to how you handle it. For me, I want to let the user navigate to a different page. So I'm going to do that. And this is my own method of navigating people to another page. Do not worry about this. But basically, what will happen now is we're going to print a statement saying you're signed in. And you can do anything you want with that. So let's go ahead and actually run this app again and remember we're going to be using this email and that password in order to sign into the app so let's go back over here and we're just going to wait until it loads up once it does we're going to be putting this email and that password in order to log in so here we are i'm going to click on this and i'm going to click i have an account over here i'm going to be putting my email which is ikea at hotmail.com for password it was just one two three four five six let's click on sign in and let's see if this works and it's not so let's see why oh seems like it's just good okay so it actually did not work so let's go ahead and find that why and of course just like last time we did not click we did not call this function so let's go over here and we are going to say sign in with email let's go ahead and pass user email for password let's go ahead and pass password let's run this again and this time this will work so i'm going to run it okay so now we have the app running we're going to click on this button 
Yes, I do have an account. Let's enter the details ikea.hotmail.com and for password it's going to be one two three four five six let's click on sign in and hopefully it does work and as you can see it did work it took us to our profile over here it says user is signed in so now we are signed in into the profile that we created so here it is you've seen how we can sign up create an account create some information and also sign in later i hope you did enjoy this episode and i hope to see you again later